Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Hungary. I hope everybody is having a great Monday, a great start to their week. Hi Lakshmi, hi Anes, good to see many students already watching and in the class. Today we are focusing on speaking part one, going for gold. Aim high, aim for those band nine scores. You can do it, okay? Band nine is not a native speaker. It's an expert user of the English language. While we wait for some more students, uh, a little bit about us. These lessons are brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help. Check us out there. And if you are learning for the general version of the exam, please check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S-Help.com. We bring you some of the best and most advanced online learning material to help you get ready for your IELTS exam. Hi, Nawin. Hi, Olim John, Azimov, Abhishek. Good to see many of our students in this class. Just a quick, pick at, uh, quick peek at those websites. This is the academic web portal here with um, the blue background. Click that big red button to join, get access to our practice exams, 100 hours of exclusive HD videos, and uh, a fully interactive course as well. That's at aehelp.com. And for the general IELTS, it's the green background here, generaliltshelp.com. Click that big red button to join there. Gunkai Ren, good to see a member jumping in on this extra scheduled class today as well. Uh, students, uh, if you have questions about our products, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. That's my name. I will be very happy to answer any questions that you have. You can get our exam books from Amazon also. So if you go to Amazon, search for AEHelps Academic IELTS or GHelps General IELTS, you can order our books. And um, today uh, we have again speaking part one. Tomorrow we will have speaking part two. Uh, that's a members chat class followed by listening uh, strategy and practice. And then we have class on Wednesday and uh, Thursday as well uh, because uh, this week I'm going away on Friday. So from Friday there will be a little bit of a break. So we have some uh, extra classes uh, this week, Monday, today, and tomorrow. Thanks, Lexmi. And then, of course, I'll be back February 6th, and we'll continue as usual. The schedule is on the YouTube community uh, board. Hi, Sam. Cut Noria. It's a new member. Hi, Sam. Nice of you to join our group of members. Uh, make sure to send me an email. Okay, students. So uh, this is speaking. And wherever you are in the world, whichever country, city you're in, whether you're in a library, in your bedroom at home, or in your office, uh, I really want to believe that you are speaking. So it's great that you're using the chat and your fingers to communicate. I want you to use your vocal cords, your tongue, your mouth, and speak as well. This is a speaking class, so please speak with me, okay? Copy my intonation, copy my pronunciation, uh, my enunciation. So just try to match what you hear, okay? And it's not a bad idea to be a little bit melodramatic. It means exaggerate, give a little bit of extra into your voice, okay? Usually when we speak another language, if it feels a little bit strange, it's probably right, okay? So let's warm up those speaking muscles with some of the questions that your examiner will definitely ask you. Uh, it's the meet and greet, okay? So here we go. Uh, what is your full name? Please give me some nice full sentences for this. Express yourself if you have answered this question 10 times before. Try to answer it in a different way this 11th time, okay? So uh, say your name in different ways, okay? Uh, Rajni Bhagrath, if you keep watching these classes, keep practicing, you can speak just like me, okay? Uh, Murasa Baraki says, my family name is Baraki and my given name is Murasa. As you can see in my passport, please address me by my nickname, which is Mary. 
Very nice, Marasa. Nice, expressive, confident. Shows that you're prepared. You're using adjective clauses. It's good. Okay. Chef on the way says, you can call me by my first name, Raghav. And I'm guessing you probably said your full name before that. Uh, Poonam Nupain says, my name is Poonam Nupain, but you can simply call me Poonam. I like that. Simply call me Poonam. That's good. It's nice, natural expression. Okay. All right. Raman Singh says, my name is Raman Deep Singh. You can call me by my nickname, Raman. That's good. Hikmatillo states, my given name is Hikmatillo. My surname is Rachmanov. Uh, please call me simply as Hikmatillo. I like that. Okay, that's nice. All right. Good job, students. So you have some different ways of introducing yourself. And when you get this question asked, it should kind of trigger like a light bulb in your head to be confident, okay? You paid good money to be there. You're not going to improve your English in that immediate situation. So everything you know is inside of your head. Uh, be expressive, be confident, believe in yourself, okay? It's very, very important. So uh, <clears throat> my full name is Franklin uh, Matthews. Please just refer to me by my nickname, uh, Frankie. Okay, so again, I'm just coming up with another way that you can express yourself for this question. Repeat after me, okay? Repeat, students. Practice questions, not just answers, okay? What is your full name? My full name is Franklin Matthews. Please just refer to me by my nickname, Frankie. All right, Frankie. May I see your identification? These are going to be the first two questions. Either may I see your identification first and then your name or vice versa, but definitely the first two questions because the examiner has to make sure that they're interviewing the correct person. There's no foul play. There's no doppelganger going in instead of the candidate. It's happened before. Um, so these are your first two questions. So be prepared and be confident. The reason why it's a good idea to practice these questions every time, a hundred times, is because you will be very confident when you get to the real situation. So never be shy and don't be bored to practice these questions often. So may I see your identification? Give me some nice full sentence answers for that question, please. Elite Gamer says, uh, here it is. Manish Kataria says, sure, here's my passport. Um, Olim John uh, Azimov says, yeah, you can, sir. You can check it out. Olim John, you have a missing word there. It's check it out, okay? Or you can please check it, okay? Yeah, you can, sir. Please check it, okay? Because you're asking, you're requesting for the check, okay? All right, Amira. Hi, Amira. Nice to see another member in the class. Amira says, yes, of course. Here it is, okay? Uh, Karen Veer says, sure, here it is. Have a look. Again, these are all nice, natural uh, responses so far, students. Just make sure that you're also really practicing your pronunciation and your intonation for these responses. So the examiner feels like you've been focusing on pronunciation elements as well. You don't need to have a really crisp English accent. Uh, to get a high band score, but you do need a clear pronunciation, okay? Sam Katnoria says, yes, sir or madam, uh, here it is. Please have a look, okay? Express yourselves, right? So, yes, of course. Just let me dig my passport out of my pocket. And here you are. Please take a look. Okay. 
So if any of you get into that really kind of awkward situation where you have tight pants and your passport stuck in your pocket, happens often to people because passports are kind of, they're, they're a little bit large size, so they can get stuck in our pockets. Um, you can say something like this. Uh, yes, of course, just let me uh, dig my passport out of my pocket and here you are, please take a look. So just uh, let me dig my passport out of my pocket and here you are, please take a look. Okay, all right. So now the examiner will ask you a few more questions to get to know you better. They'll probably explain that uh, the speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each part. It will take roughly 12 to 15 uh, minutes. And then you say, yes, of course, I'm ready to go. Okay, so always respond to the examiner. So that will show your confidence and uh, it will keep you fluent. So anytime the examiner says a sentence, don't just sit there quietly and pull yourself together. Don't close yourself. Open body posture, forward thinking, forward speaking, breathe deep, okay? All right, so uh, to begin with, just to, some questions to get to know you better, some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? This is a very popular question among examiners, so make sure you prepare for this one. Do you work or study? Again, repeat the question, then answer, okay? All right, and I see Yek Stun's in the class and Ferdov's in here as well, very good. Okay, Ferdov's Nabiev, our member, says, I have been working for the last 10 years in St. Petersburg, Russia, as an account manager. By the way, I have been trying to learn English to pursue my master's degree as well, okay? So Ferdov's two small corrections. I have been working for the last 10 years, okay, for the is missing there, and I've been trying to learn English to pursue a master's uh, degree as well. So join, students, join as well, okay? Uh, be confident for Dobbs. Instead of saying, I've been trying to learn, be affirmative, say, I've been learning. I've been learning English to pursue my master's degree, okay? Uh, sharing is caring. Uh, Kapil AC says, currently I'm studying in uh, higher secondary level in science faculty. Okay, I'm not sure sharing is caring what you mean by higher secondary level. Okay, uh, high school is uh, considered secondary school um, and uh, college university is considered post secondary school or higher level education. We don't really say higher secondary level in science. I've never heard it. Could be wrong. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, otherwise, it looks good. All right. Looks good. As well as I'm attending IELTS classes for my further education to Australia. Good. Sharing is caring. Nabeen Rajmi says, well, I've completed my diploma level. Uh, twice, uh, the second time a month ago. Now I'm preparing for IELTS um, specifically to pursue my postgraduate education. Okay, careful with your word students and your word choices. Okay, make sure to really focus on answering these questions with clear, accurate English. That's really important. First impressions do matter and you want to come across as very clear, accurate, coherent, cohesive in the beginning, okay? Uh, Juan Pablo Avila says, I'm working as an independent designer for companies doing special projects and involves a lot of thinking and problem solving abilities. I've also been studying for this exam for about a year. Very nice, Juan Pablo, very nice, okay? Then Nguyen Thetun says, last year I finished my university and now I'm waiting for graduation, which will be held in February. Um, then Nguyen, we actually call that uh, convocation. Okay, so your graduation ceremony and your convocation when you get all your documents and papers, convocation, okay, which will be held in February. And I'm learning English to pursue my master's degree. Very good, Then Nguyen. Nicely done. Okay, good job. I'm really enjoying students that you are uh, 
putting yourself out there and making an effort to use higher level grammar. Uh, a lot of you are using present perfect and present perfect progressive, which is really nice, okay? Your examiner will catch that and that will count for your grammatical range and accuracy. So that's great. To increase your grammatical range and accuracy, as well as sounding natural, uh, use contractions in your speaking for the present perfect, okay? So I'll show you what I mean. So <clears throat> I've been working uh, part-time as a waiter at a local diner and I've been studying both in university for my bachelor's uh, degree in engineering and at home for this IELTS exam so that I can pursue my master's abroad after convocation. Okay, so there's that word that I mentioned earlier, uh, Lanthwin, uh, convocation. All right, so again, good job students with using the present perfect progressive, okay, the I've been working or I've been studying, that's nice. Again, that increases your grammatical range, all right? An accuracy score, notice that what I've done here is I've, uh, I've, I keep saying I've. Native speakers usually don't say I have unless they're really enunciating that present perfect. Most of the time, we use the contraction I've, okay? Uh, especially with the progressive form because otherwise it gets really long like I have been verb ing. So we try to condense that, okay? So you want to sound natural, then use the contraction. Now when you use a contraction in speaking, okay, don't use contraction in writing. Um, so when you use the contraction in your speaking, it's really important to enunciate the VE. The reason is that when um, someone with an accent is using contractions, it's a little bit harder to hear for native speakers at times, okay? So I'm just going to make that note and that tip for you, okay? So it's really good that you're using the present perfect. Use contractions, okay? So it's great that you are showing complex grammar with present perfect to increase your score even more use contractions like I've okay and make sure to really enunciate the VE, okay? So I've, I've, I've been part time, working part time as a waiter at a local diner, and I've been studying both in university for my bachelor's degree in engineering and at home for this IELTS exam so that I can pursue my master's abroad after convocation. Now here's dinner, so let's change that to diner. Okay. All right, um, next question, students. I think everybody got that. If that's not clear, you can ask me later or send me an email. Here we go. Next question. Uh, what do you like about your work or study? Okay, so follow-up questions are more common than ever in the IELTS exam. Uh, the examiners are really digging for details. That helps them to differentiate the higher level students, band six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. So um, be really ready for these follow-up questions. So what do you like about your work or study? Okay. So Salam Karam says, it's very challenging 
and gives me the chance to always meet new people, which is very important and improve my public uh, relations in the marketplace. Salam, it's not bad. Just make sure to include the question in your answer to make it really clear. What I like about my work is, and now you've also created a conditional, right? So what I like about my work and my school is that it's very challenging and gives me the chance to frequently meet new people, which is important for me to improve my public relations uh, skills for the marketplace. That's your band nine answer, Salam. Okay, otherwise not bad at all. All right, Gunjan Bhatt says, I'm not going to lie, I just uh, feel it's very challenging because I have to deal with many students. And the thing that motivates me the most is I never get bored. Gunjan, use I, don't switch to you. That's awkward. Now you're talking about me, not yourself. So don't do that. Uh, it never gets boring. Uh, you want to use the present progressive or present tense for that because you're making a general statement, Gunjan. So careful with your grammar. All right. Let's see some other answers here. Violet Nguyen says, the thing that I love about studying is that I can learn about new things in the world. Um, okay, students, don't use the word things. Remember, I say this often. Don't use the word thing. Don't use the word stuff. Always, always find the better noun. So Violet Nguyen, the aspect that I love the most about studying is I can learn new information about the world. Much, much better sounding. You're going to get more points for lexical resource. You're going to get a higher band score, all right? Violet Nguyen, if you use the word thing twice in one sentence and you keep doing that, your lexical resource, okay, score, basically your vocabulary score is going to decrease, okay? Uh, Nabin Rejmi says, well, that's an interesting question. Um, I like mostly the students because student life is uh, really enjoyable, lots of great memories, and I meet many friends. Uh, Nabin, not bad. Again, I corrected, made it more natural. Uh, students, don't use an expression like, well, that's an interesting question when it's not an interesting question. Okay, so please don't use fillers unnecessarily. That's a really important tip. So it's okay to say that's an interesting question or a unique question if it really is, but this isn't, okay? So here's a tip, okay, it's really important. Uh, do not use fillers uh, when they are inappropriate. Like, that's an interesting question. Uh, dot, 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 when it's not really an interesting question. If it is, use that expression. But if it's not, then don't use it. What do you like about your work or study? It's not a particularly interesting question. It's just a common everyday question, okay? Uh, so make sure to avoid that because you will lose marks, okay? So if you do this, if you use fillers unnecessarily, you will lose band scores, okay? Keep that in mind, all right? Uh, what do you like about your work or study? The part I like or the aspect, okay, not thing. Okay, so the part I like most about my studies is that I'm constantly learning new and interesting facts, not things, about the world. Just the other day, a professor informed me that there is a type of plant, a walking 
cactus that can actually move locations. All right. So uh, here are a couple of uh, exciting, fun, interesting points while answering this question. Uh, repeat after me. What do you like about your work or study? The part I like most about my studies is that I'm constantly learning new and interesting facts about the world. Uh, just the other day, a professor informed me that there's a type of plant, a walking cactus, that, that can actually move locations. As funny as you think that might sound, there is actually a cactus that is able to, with its roots through hydraulics, slowly but surely relocate to other places. Um, so that's an interesting fact for you. Don't use the word things. Increase your lexical resource. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so that's another tip, right? Here's another tip. Always find a word better, and it's usually a noun, of course, better than thing or stuff as this will help you improve your lexical resource, basically uh, your vocabulary score, okay? And it will actually help you be more fluent as well. I hope that that makes sense so far, students. Now, after your warm-up, the um, examiner will say, okay, uh, a little bit more for part one. Uh, let's um, talk about water, all right? So the examiner will introduce some kind of a topic, and that will deal with that topic and will deal with you, okay? All right. Anusha, yes, you can write capitals for listening. Um, students, I don't mind answering any question. Uh, just try to stay on topic. Try to focus on the speaking, okay? All right, here we go. So let's talk about water. I just had a sip of water. What a great and beautiful molecule water is. All right, so uh, let's talk about water, H2O, aqua. Here we go. Uh, how often do you drink water in a day? Give me a nice uh, full sentence answer for that one. So how often do you drink water in a day? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. Oh, no worries, Anusha, it's fine. All right. So Flower Sun says, I usually drink two bottles of water every day, even when I'm at school too, as it reduces uh, frustration, keeps me calm, in situations and quenches my thirst. Ines says, I frequently drink water, roughly one liter per day, um, using my reusable water bottle, uh, both working at my office and sitting at my couch at home. Ines, nice use of the correlative conjunction, both and, and I like how you're being environmentally friendly with the reusable water bottle. Very good. Okay. Dicey SPB says, actually, I drink about two liters of water a day. I don't count exactly, but I start my day with a glass of water as it helps to flush my system, not our. So Dicey SPB, remember, we're staying with me, my, I, okay? Helps to flush my system, my body, okay? Aisha says, I tried to drink water frequently during the day. Yesterday, I drank about eight glasses, roughly two liters. This keeps me hydrated, healthy, and happy. Right? It's very good. Okay, Aisha, a little bit more, but otherwise not bad at all. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's do this. I frequently drink water throughout the day. Yesterday, I probably had about eight 
glasses, roughly two liters. I'm quite aware that drinking water is essential for my health and mood, uh, so I do pay attention to this and always uh, carry a uh, water bottle with me. Okay, all right, let's do it. Repeat after me, students. So uh, you've probably noticed a lot of you that I am uh, making sure that I answer, then I explain, and finally, when necessary, I include an example, especially for this part one because I'm talking about myself, right? And students, uh, FYI, you should be drinking closer to two liters of water per day, all right? So here we go, repeat after me. How often do you drink water in a day? I frequently drink water throughout the day. Yesterday, I probably had about eight glasses, roughly two liters. I'm quite aware that drinking water is essential for my health and mood, so I pay attention to do this and always carry a water bottle with me. Boom, band, nine, no problem. There you go. Um, next question. Now here's where you might want to say something like, that's an interesting question. Do you like the taste of water? Do you like the taste of water? <laughs> okay, now here is where uh, you might say, well, that's an interesting question. Because I think that's kind of a question where it's not that strange, but it's definitely interesting. Uh, Amit says, needless to say, water is tasteless, so every person will not feel the taste of water. I don't know, Amit, that's your opinion, but I would disagree. I definitely think water has taste. I'm drinking this water here. And it certainly seems to me like it has taste. Uh, Maximu John uh, Sabrov says, yep, I like the taste of water. It qu quenches my thirst quickly, and it has no bad smell to it, especially the water I drink. Very good. Okay, that's a good answer. I try to buy bottled water as much as possible and drink that. Okay. Uh, Gunjai Butt, I think you're off topic there. Uh, Asila Azizova says, absolutely, I love the taste of water because uh, I can never live without it. It helps me to stay healthy. Um, Asila, good. Again, students. Please, please, please remember, okay, here's another tip. I have to write it down because it seems like many of you are forgetting this tip and it's an important one. Uh, whenever questions are asked about you, it is very important that you respond with the appropriate pronoun or pronouns, I, me, my, myself. As this is accurate and coherent. Okay, do not switch to you, us, our, we, people, okay? This is confusing. Even if you're a native speaker and you do that in conversation, you can confuse people, okay? If I'm asking about you, whether or not you like the taste of water, and you start telling me about people and people's opinion of the taste of water, then we're miscommunicating. Okay, I'm asking about your opinion. You're telling me about the people's opinion. Those are two very different uh, concepts. So please, please, please um, focus on the question. Okay. Yom Makwana says, nope, it's none of your business. You can say that, but the IELTS examiner will say, well, it's my business, the score that I give you, and I just gave you a five because you're not expressing yourself. 
Yom. So, I mean, you paid to be there, right? Might as well express yourself. Okay, um, so do you like the taste of water? I would say yes, but that's just me. Yes, I absolutely love the taste of water. It has a slightly sweet and minerally flavor. And there is nothing better on a hot summer day when I feel dehydrated or after a good workout than a cool glass of H2O. All right. So here we go, students. Repeat after me. Do you like the taste of water? Why or why not? There's some brackets. They won't ask you that if you answer. Uh, yes, I absolutely love the taste of water. It has a slightly sweet and minerally flavor, and there's nothing better on a hot summer day when I feel dehydrated or after a good workout than a cool glass of H2O. All right, dehydrated. Hydro meaning water. Dehydrated meaning your system is lacking water. Okay, lacking water. All right, next question. When do you like to drink water? Okay, so answer this question for me with a nice full sentence. When do you like to drink water? Okay. Arafat, Islam says there are, are several times um, when I love drinking water, but after jogging in the morning and a meal, I like to drink water the most. Arafat, you have some really good ideas, okay? So after jogging and after a meal, I love your comparisons too. Just really pay attention to the grammar, okay? All right. Uh, Amit Rana says, after playing with my friends at the playground, I drink a bottle of water. It gives me energy to play more. So this is when I really especially enjoy that water. Uh, students, use the question, okay? It's a time condition. When do you like to? The time I like to the most, okay? So use the question in your answer, all right? Use the, que use the question in your answer. Uh, Shamsidin Hakimov, same thing. So uh, Shamsidin Hakimov says, after working out and on sunny days, of course, as well as after running, I really enjoy a cold glass of water, as I just mentioned, okay? So use the question, use the question. Pachu Yadav says, yes, I like the taste of water because it contains minerals and it's tasty. That's for the previous question, I'm sure. Okay. Lazar Petkovsky says, I like to drink water after workout and after dinner. All right. Sadana Sach says, just after bed and before going to the gym, I really enjoy a cup of hot water with some lemon zest with a little bit of lemon. Okay, very nice. Kizito Uahemu says, water is essential in my life. I like taking an H2O after a day working out in the morning and evening, and also after a meal. Kizito, it's not a contrast, so don't use nevertheless, okay? Mr. Big Style, whenever I'm thirsty, especially after hard work, I always drink about a half liter of water. It helps me rejuvenate. Just before this exam, I drank a bottle of water to feel alive. Mr. Beck style, good ideas. Watch your grammar, watch your abbreviations. 500 milligrams is incorrect. You were thinking 500 milliliters. It's ML, but you can say half a liter, okay? So, well, uh, aside from a hot day in the sun, 
or going to the gym. I especially enjoy uh, drinking some water in the morning after waking up and when I feel a bit stressed like just before coming into this interview. All right, there we go. So repeat after me, students. Uh, when do you like to drink water? Well, uh, aside from a hot day in the sun or going to the gym, as I had just mentioned, I especially enjoy drinking some water in the morning after waking up and when I feel a bit stressed, like before coming into this interview. I don't know about you, but when I feel stressed, I tend to get cotton mouth, okay? It's called cotton mouth. When your mouth is dry, it's called cotton mouth, okay? I'll write that here. Cotton mouth. Okay, it's a dry mouth. All right. Next question, students. Rolling along really nicely. I must say there are a lot of fantastic comments in the stream and you're putting yourselves out there. That's great, students. You're doing a fantastic job. When you hear new words, you hear new grammar from me, make sure to write that down so you can practice that later, okay? Um, where can you buy water in your area? Give me a nice full sentence answer to this one. Where can you buy water in your area? For Dobbs, Nabiev, our member says, I prefer to purchase some bottles of water on the first floor of my house. Uh, it's just two minutes away. And it's also cheaper than at the supermarkets in my vicinity. I, in fact, I bought this bottle that I have with me in my exam at that place. Yeah, it's a good one for Dobbs. Yes, you are allowed to bring with you some drinking water into the interview because you might be nervous. Um, so, uh, yeah, for Dobbs, that's good. Might as well say that if you have a bottle of water from the first floor in your building where you can purchase it. All right. Let's see some other answers. Nidhe Kadepaun says, Water is available almost everywhere in my area. I purchased the water bottles from the store, while the water, for other purposes, I buy from the local uh, municipal office. Okay, you have to explain that to me. I can't guess municipality is the noun, Nidhe, municipality, if you're looking for a noun there. All right. Jahid Hussein says, basically, I get water um, from the water pump in my home. Otherwise, I buy it from a nearby grocery store. Jahid, very good. Okay, so now remember, this is buy, not get, right? You might get water from different places, a river, a lake, an underground reservoir, a pump. There are lots of places to get water, but here... The focus is buy. So where do you purchase water? Make sure to pay attention to that in your answer. Okay? It's very important. Rajveer Singh, uh, our uh, other member, says, In Gurgaon, I can purchase water effortlessly from a grocery store, which is just five minutes walk from my home. Like today, I bought two water bottles to satisfy my thirst. Yeah, and the other way you can say that, Rajvir, is quench, quench my thirst. Okay, so <clears throat> most corner stores grocery shops and gas stations sell water around my home. 
I usually buy uh, one liter water bottles just down the street as I did today so that I can quench my thirst. Okay, so when you're thirsty to negate your thirst, to make yourself not thirsty, uh, what we say is you quench your thirst, quench my thirst, okay? Satisfy my hunger, quench my thirst. Satisfy my hunger, quench my thirst. So repeat after me, students. Where can you buy water in your area? Most corner stores, grocery shops, and gas stations sell water around my home. I usually buy, pay attention to your spelling, uh, buy uh, one liter water bottles just down the street as I did today so that I can quench my thirst. Okay, I've been there. All right, students, next and final question. Has the quality of your drinking water changed since you were a child? If yes, how? Okay, this is the final question. Give me your best answer. All right, so has the quality of your drinking water changed since you were a child? And of course, one of the times I like to drink water is when I'm doing lots of talking. And I'll let me tell you, it definitely tastes great. I think it's just a common misconception that water is flavorless because it's tasting fantastic. All right. Let's see what you come up with. Ishtiak Jaman says, I don't think so as I live in a clean city and the water I normally get from nature is quite good uh, and seems to me the same as before. But if I consider bottled water, then my answer is yes, it has changed. Okay, Estaic, if you make that statement, make sure to explain it. Okay, that was good though. All right. For Dobbs, Nabiev says, yes, it has transformed. When I was 68 years old, the quality of Water was blue and color like the sky, but nowadays it has some kind of a dark blue color. Okay, suspicious. Interesting and suspicious. Uh, Elite Gamer says, yes, the quality of water has changed a lot. A lot is two words, Elite Gamer. As now water purification systems have improved. I find tap water cleaner, it tastes better. Okay, I'm happy to hear that, Elite Gamer. So. Changing for the better as water purification systems have improved. Begzod uh, Erkanov says, It is axiomatic that the quality of my drinking water has changed dramatically. This is mainly because bottled water is pure nowadays. It doesn't have extra added chemicals. All right, like maybe fluoride or something. Good. Latifa says, yes, the quality has changed dramatically. In the past, my family relied on a well to get drinking water and for cooking. But nowadays, we can get fresh water um, directly from the tap, uh, and we rely more on filters. All right. So certainly... The quality of drinking water has become very different from my youth. <clears throat> Back then, the tap water wasn't as clean as today and often people were advised to boil it before using it 
for drinking or cooking. But now, water purification systems have greatly improved with technology and people, including myself, never worry about having to boil it before consumption. All right, so a nice, lengthy, clear, clean, complex answer for this last question. Uh, repeat after me. Has the quality of your drinking water changed since you were a child? Certainly. The quality of drinking water has become very different from my youth. Back then, the tap water wasn't as clean as today, and often people were advised to boil it before using it for drinking or cooking. But now, water purification systems have greatly improved with technology, and people, including myself, never worry about having to boil it before consumption. Okay. All right, students. Nice job today. I can still see a lot of comments, which is fantastic. Students, for over 100 hours of HD video lessons from me and from some other instructors as well, uh, make sure to join our premium packages at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gielteshelp.com for general. So these kinds of lessons and strategies, you can get them in high quality for general IELTS green background, gielteshelp.com, and for academic IELTS, aehelp.com with the blue background, click that big red button to join our programs. I hope everybody enjoyed this class. I will be back tomorrow with speaking part two and listening strategies and practice. You're very, very welcome, Anusha, Anatoly, Max Mujon, Sabirov, Great participation for Dobbs. I love how you're always taking initiative to answer questions. That's great. You're very welcome, everybody. Much love from the heart of Europe, Budapest, Hungary. Bye for now.